sorry, I've got uh, Muad. I think wants to come back yeah. on the Farringdon. Fa Farringdon. Can I just, issue. I, I, um, it was interesting, um, Richard. Yesterday, some of us on the Regener regeneration committee went down to Smithfields Market, and, and we were told actually not only do you have uh, the underground and Thames Link going under it, but Crossrail as well. Um, so, to, to what extent is, is, is flood risk, in, when, when, when such investment has been put in place, taken on board? Um, the, the movements of water in, 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 in places like Farringdon, given the City of London tell us quite clearly there's always been a service water flood risk there. The, um, it's factored into a very early stage. We've been working with Crossrail for the best part of a decade on planning which services we would need to move and which ones we would need to reinforce in order to allow them to build Crossrail safely and efficiently. <coughs> In terms of, so on the building side, it's absolutely fine, and the same is going on with the Thames Tunnel. Where, where the Thames Tunnel goes, in some cases, we have to move some, some services, and that work is all taking place, and it's make sure that we can do it in good time. The work that we're doing now with London Underground is we have what we call a seepage protocol. So if, if, if we or they spot any kind of signs of ingress into a tube tunnel, and this follows a very high-profile burst just before the Olympics, which the committee may, may remember, we now have a protocol where all that gets investigated. So a lot of work done at Baker Street recently, where we were worried there was water coming in, couldn't, couldn't find it. We worked with London Underground to do that. As a result of discussions yesterday at Network Rail's operations headquarters in Derby, we're going to have a very similar seepage protocol, may not be called that, but it'll be the same principle with Network Rail, because clearly we need it. So that's one of the things you've learned from this. One of the things we've learned from this is we need to mirror. Done in London, yeah. and you're going to the do good work with, with, with okay. London Underground has got to be matched by equally good work with Network Rail. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that because it's interesting. City of London were also suggesting that it may be that the River Fleet seeping through in, in the case of Farringdon, but um, I, I don't. That's, my knowledge of underground uh, rivers no, is I think you'll find the river, I think you'll find the River Fleet is actually deeper, so, deeper, so it won't, okay. won't be seeping. But what, what does happen is that there is a, a pumping station at Vine Street which is operated by London Underground, and that takes water from the tracks at Farringdon and puts it into the fleet sewer. And it was that system that was blocked, uh, as we discovered fairly late in the day, when we send our own, our own engineers in to investigate. And as soon as we unblocked the grill, uh, that system started functioning properly, and the water disappeared very quickly. So that's another learning point, that we're going to have Thames, if there's an operational incident, we will have Thames people in the network rail control room, and they will have operational people in our control room.